So today I'm going to talk about suppressing and repressing emotions and some easy, fun practices that will help you release some of that stuff and why it's important. So, you know, I had a client recently and it was a yoga private client and um, she was having a hard time really relaxing her shoulders. Um, her shoulders were very high up and she didn't even realize it. And what was funny um, is that she couldn't actually relax her mouth and her shoulders at the same time. And so when she realized this, it was super funny and she laughed at herself. Um, and of course we worked through that through the course of the practice. Um, but what it really brought up for, our, for me and made me reflect on is that so often we hold tightness and tension in our jaw, shoulders, and neck. And most of the time that is related to things that we aren't saying or speaking, um, ways that we're suppressing or repressing our voice, what we have to say, um, what we need to express in the world. And that really comes out of a lot of work in, uh, in breath work and energetics where I can actually see the parallels um, in somebody's breath work practice, uh, in their energetics uh, during a tuning fork session or a coaching session, that this tension in the jaw um, and the shoulders is really related to this ability to speak. And if you think about it in our culture, how many times do we tell children to sit still and be quiet? Even as adults, how many times are we told to sit still and be quiet? And, you know, if we're good and we follow the rules, then uh, we get really good at suppressing or repressing any opportunity or any urge or desire to move or make sound. And unfortunately, like that's a really hard thing because as humans, we are designed to move and we are designed to make sound like it is part of what keeps us healthy. And when you look at other cultures, right, lots of other cultures and historically even in America, maybe not so much in America, but historically in, in healthy cultures that are well-rounded, there are practices of singing, there are practices of dancing that are daily, that are cultural, are part of the fabric of life. Like you would eat a meal, you would also sing, right? You would go out for a walk after a meal, you would dance during the week at some point. But in our Western world, in our current culture, when was the last time you sang and danced or danced? It's probably been a while, right? And so singing and dancing is really part of natural expression and really a way that our system moves energy. And that's important because if you shut down those avenues of moving energy, then those channels get shut down. The body tightens, right, when you don't move it, and the pathway for making sound and expression um, closes. And so we just get used to not speaking. We get used to not sharing those urges of what we wanna say or what needs to be said. Or if we do, we get really frustrated um, because that pathway isn't clear uh, and it isn't open. And the same in the body, right? That as we decrease our level of movement, the body tightens and we're able to, uh, we move less. That's just the natural progression. And, you know, we're currently in, in the current place that we are in our world. We need people to speak up. We need people to say the truth. We need people to say what is right and what needs to change in a way that is well received. And so what often happens, and most of us have this experience, I see this in my coaching practice, I see it in my own life, uh, I see it in my family, I see it in friends, that when you try and communicate something that is very emotional, you have a lot of emotional charge that goes with it. And that could be anger, that could be frustration, that could be shame. 
And when that emotional charge is carried on your words, nine times out of 10, the emotional charge is gonna hit the recipient before the words hit this recipient, right? And so what that means is that who you're speaking to, the recipient of your words, uh, actually gets the emotional charge and they shut down before the words ever get there. So they respond, react, or shut down based on the emotion and not the words. And I know we've all had that experience, right? Where you're like, but you're not hearing me. And they're like, yeah, right, because all I hear is your emotion. (laughs) And so then we begin to think that emotion is bad or not good, and we label all these judgments on it. But really, you just have to take responsibility for your own emotional charge and understand and clear why you have that emotional charge and maybe change some behaviors on your end. And when that emotional charge is clear and you say the words of change, right, you say the words of truth, they are received. And when they words of truth are received clearly, it is amazing what can happen. And what I see happening now is when my clients step up and speak without the emotional charge, because we have done a lot of work to clear the emotional charges, so that when they come up and speak about things that need to change, the way things need to be different, um, systems that need to change, processes that need to change, behaviors that need to change, they're heard and, and it's received and things change. It's really amazing. Like, it's amazing, amazing to see because I really believe that for many years, the change didn't happen and it was really hard. Um, but we're not in that place anymore. Things are happening, okay, maybe not at the rate that we want, but things are changing. Things are happening, but it requires us to clear what those suppressions, repressions, those emotional charges, so that when we speak the truth, it can really be received and action can then be taken really quickly. And um, yeah, so it's exciting and dynamic. Um, But my suggestion to you is a great and easy and fun place to start because honestly, Moving through your emotional charges for many people just feels really heavy and a lot of work. Um, And it is, and it has great benefits. So um, it is well worth the journey. Uh, But an easy, fun place to start is by singing and dancing. So, you know, during this time where there is a lot of change, during this time where there is a lot of emotion, during this time where people literally are at their bandwidth for change and emotional processing, have some fun, sing and dance, put fun music on, dance around your house, sing along, make sound, whatever that sound is, make it loudly (laughs) and enjoy, right? Let some of that emotion move through. And for most of us as humans in the Western world, letting emotion move through in song or with song or with dance, it's way easier. We have way more permission, right? We have way more permission to be angry when there's an angry song on and way more permission to be sad and depressed when there's a sad and depressed song on. Way more to be happy and upbeat and make festive sound when there's fun music on. So you know, go with it, try it, see how it works. At the very least, you're gonna make sound and you're gonna move, which I 100% guarantee you is gonna make you feel better um, every single time. So figure out a way that you can weave that practice into your life. And um, and then I wanna find out how it goes. Like, are your weeks better? Do you feel less stressed? Do you feel Do you feel yourself not being as emotionally charged or as emotionally triggered when you give yourself permission to move some energy and move some emotion? Um, I can't wait to find out. So let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to find out more information about me or my offerings, please check out my website, danashamas.com. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. I send them out weekly with tips, insights, rituals, meditations, personal updates, special events and offerings. So I know you don't want to miss out. 
Uh, thanks again for watching and I look forward to connecting soon.